take your seats for a second, okay? Well, uh, as I said, lovely to welcome you all here this morning on this special day. Uh, lovely sunny weather for us again as well. And uh, we're going to sing about our God being great and continue that theme. Except this is a more of a, 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 a kind of one of the kids' choruses we sing. Our God is a great big God. It says exactly the same thing that we've just been singing about, except it's in uh, simpler language, if you like. Our God is a great big God. And he holds us in his hands. He's higher than a skyscraper. So, would you like to come out in front of you two and come and do our actions for us? You can stand in the middle here. Do to come yet? Uh, Charlotte will show you what to do. Uh, and we'll don't worry about it. Okay, and uh, stand there. That's right. Very good. Okay, so um, we'll do this. We'll do it once through sitting down to give you a rest. All right, because these don't need a rest. So you can have a rest. And then we'll do it a second time, and we'll all stand up and sing it. Okay. Is that all right? You two ready? with the kids, that's fine, you can do it there, but you don't have to, you don't want to. Our God is a great big God and he holds us in his hands, and then when we come, uh, how wonderful to be a part of God's amazing plan, we all can clap along with ease as well, okay? Is that alright? Everyone's okay. Anyone else wants to come out with that as well? Our God is
Well, that was good, wasn't it? That's woke you all up now. Happy Mother's Day to all the mums here today, if you've come in. And uh, I hope you've been looked after. I remember Mother's Day when I was younger and uh, my mum was still with us. And uh, we used to uh, make a toast and, uh, and, and uh, a favourite, she used to like cornflakes. And of course, as kids, you'd always overfill the bowl and it would spill as you went up the stairs. And so she had it all mixed together in one plate. Coke uh, is all on the same thing. And the orange juice, my sister used to always spill that as she went upstairs. But that was, that was our happy Mother's Day. So I hope you've had a good Mother's Day this morning so far. Now, this is a family service. We're all going to stay in together. Children, you're all going to stay in too. We're going to do stuff that will be a little bit different because it's a family time service. And, um, and we're going to enjoy this together. And we're going to learn something about, uh, about, well, about what God says about our families and about how we deal with life. Because sometimes mums and dads and families here this morning, life doesn't always go to plan, does it? It's not always quite what we wanted it to be or quite what it, we thought it was going to be. And so we're going to look at that this morning. How does God tell us and help us in the middle of all of that? But before we go any further, I'm going to ask Sharon if she'll come and pray for us as we start our service. Good morning. Let's Good morning. pray. Dear God, I thank you and praise you for sending Jesus to pay the price and bear the pain for each of one of my sins, and not just mine, but everyone's. We can't even begin to think how that felt for you, Jesus. Jesus, thank you for obeying your Father, for setting us all free from that burden. Help us not to forget Jesus in the business of our lives. Praise God. Jesus, you are alive today in heaven and praying for us all. You are also alive in the believers' hearts through your Holy Spirit, and we thank you for your Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, continue to speak to us as we pray and read the Bible. God, you have blessed us all with so many gifts of goodness. Today, especially, we thank you for our mums, nans, stepmums, aunties, godmothers, who show us so much love. Help us to thank them today. God, we pray that you will help us to be forgiving to others, just like you forgive us when we mess up. God, we pray especially for the people of Ukraine. Help them escape to safety and be able to settle in other countries. Help those who have special needs and mental health problems and are probably very anxious right now. For those who must stay who aren't well enough to go. For those who must fight. For those who are in hiding and scared. Please protect them and provide for their needs. Please bring peace once again to Ukraine and in your mercy stop this war. Keep us praying for our Christian brothers and sisters in Ukraine that they will be a help and encouragement to those around them. And as our pastor Will takes the service today, we pray you will soften our hearts, that you will speak to each and every one of us. God, we leave all the re these requests at your feet and trust your will be done in each and every one. Amen. Mother's Day can be a happy day or a sad day, a day of celebration or of pain, of joy or of longing or hope or of disappointment. Or maybe it's so much more complicated than that. You might be a birth mother, an adoptive mother, a grandmother, a foster mum, a guardian, a social worker, a mother figure, or longing to be a mother. You might have had a great mum, or not. You might be struggling as a mother, struggling to become a mother, or struggling with what could have been. You might be remembering mothers or children who are no longer here, or celebrating the mothers and mother figures who are here. 
wherever you are, whatever you feel, and whatever your experience of mothers, mother figures, and motherhood, today is for you. This Mother's Day, know you are not forgotten. You are remembered in the celebration and in the pain, in the joy and in the longing, as we say thank you to our mothers and mother figures for keeping going when it is hard, for all you have given up and taken up, for your encouragement, your love, your tears and your strength. Thank you. Christmas, Mary and Joseph. This is Mary. Hi! You see, Mary was the mother of Jesus, but before that happened, she lived in the town of Nazareth. Mary had no children because she lived according to God's law <laughs> and had never been married. Oops! But she was engaged to marry a man named Joseph. Hey, -o. One day, an angel came to Mary and said, Hi. Ah! 
that God had chosen Mary. The angel said, God is with you. But Mary was afraid and confused. Huh? She wondered what the angel was talking about. Then the angel said, Don't be afraid. God loves you and wants to use you in a great way. Uh, me? You will give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be very great, and he will be the king forever. Uh, hold on. Mary asked, But how can this happen? For she was not married yet and knew that she couldn't have a child until she was married. But the angel told Mary that the Holy Spirit would make her pregnant. Wow! So that the baby born will be holy and will be called the Son of God. Wow! The angel reminded her that nothing is impossible with God. Eh, okay, let's do this! So Mary decided to trust God and all that he had planned for her. Before their wedding, Joseph found out that Mary was pregnant. Wait, what? He thought she had done something wrong. Uh. But Joseph was a man of God and decided to break off the engagement quietly so no one around town would think badly of Mary. While Joseph was thinking about all this, an angel appeared to him in a dream. Oh. Uh, hi? The angel said, Joseph, don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife. Huh, why? The angel explained that Mary's baby was from God. Wait, what? The angel told Joseph that the baby's name would be Jesus, and he would save his people from their sins. Oh, wow. And when Joseph woke up, he did as the angel told him. Uh, hi. You right? Really? and took Mary as his wife, while she was still pregnant with a son of God. And so Joseph and Mary trusted in God, and the two followed the plan that God had given them to help bring the Savior into the world. Right, why would we have a Christmas reading on a Mother's Day? Why would we do that? Um, it, it seems strange, doesn't it? And so today we're gonna to look at, obviously, one of the most famous mothers of, ever, of all, Mary herself, okay? And what happened to her? Now, um, I thought we'd just have a quick look through her life and the sort of things she had to put up with. Because Mary was, was not only, she was, she was uh, a young girl when she heard that she was going to be pregnant with Jesus and everything, and all, all of that surrounded that, and went through the same sort of childbearing and everything else that any other mum had done, um, and, and had to live through life, and went the ups and downs of, of motherhood, if you like, and life in general. So I thought we'd have a quick look at her, her life, really, uh, so we can learn something from that. So, Mary, when she, well, of course, she finds out she's pregnant. Well, I suppose let's just start a bit further back. Sometimes, as we said before, life doesn't always go according to how we plan it, does it? And when we think about when we're younger or whatever and we're growing up and we're thinking about getting married and stuff, having kids, having families, and we think this is all going to be how we want it, and we have hopes... And we have dreams, and we have plans, and we have all sorts of things. And nearly, and what well, I would say, 100% of the people who, who start off like that, somehow or other, it, it, things go wrong at different times. Some things go wonderfully right, but some things go wrong, and it doesn't always turn out how we wanted it to. But somehow or other, we muddle our way through. If you're a family or a mum or whatever this morning, and you're struggling through that, then welcome to the club. Everybody else is in the same boat. Other people, and it's the same for all of us, isn't it? Other people may seem like, They've got their life together. And to be honest, it looks like that, doesn't it? And you look across at other people and think, I wish I was like them. But that's very dangerous because you don't really know what's going on in their life either. And they might not have it together. And it's the same here. Mary is, is the mum of Jesus, if you like. She's the mother of Jesus, the son of God, and the saviour of the world. You'd think if anyone was going to get it right, Mary would. Now, a lot of the things that happened to Mary, she didn't choose, or so we think. So Mary, first of all, even when she gets pregnant, it's not by a husband. So there's disgrace and things that are brought on her. She didn't ask for that. And she just goes with it, as we'll see a little bit later on. And then all around her son's birth, the baby, this should be the greatest day and everything, the wonderful day, there's all these strange happenings. Wise men, and shepherds, and all of the stuff that we read about at Christmas. Angels, people speaking to her, mysterious things. As she takes the baby to be dedicated up at the temple... As she brings the baby and Jesus in there up at the temple, 
two old people come, Simeon and Anna, talk to her about prophecies that they've had and things that are going to happen to this child. And one of them says that this child's going to be great, Simeon says, and he's going to rule all over, all over the world, as it were, but, uh, but he's going to suffer many things. He'll cause the falling and rising of nations. And a sword, says, says um, um, what was his name again? Simeon. Gosh, I, I'm definitely losing it. S Simeon says um, that a sword is going to pierce your heart, Mary. What does that mean? And it says at that time, Mary just thought about all these things. She pondered. I love that word, pondered. We used to, I know somebody used to have um, a goldfish called Ponderous because it used to live in a pond and it was just thinking all the time. And uh, so Mary, Mary, had, Mary had these things and pondered them in her heart, thought about them, but didn't, couldn't do much about it. And we don't know much about Jesus' childhood. What we do know, though, is that one day, Jesus, when he was about 12, Jesus took her up, took, sorry, Mary took, and Joseph took Jesus up to the temple, and they left him behind. Now, that seems to be very strange, doesn't it? They're halfway home, and they, they realise he isn't there. They have to go back and get him. Uh, that rings a bell with me, because I remember, well, I don't remember, but I'm told that my mum left me behind outside the shops once, uh, in, in the pram. And, uh, and I was quite happy. I didn't even know anything about it. We had one of them big silver cross prams, you know, the big sort of, like a chariot, you know. And, and I was sat outside, apparently. Uh, these days, you leave your dogs outside tied up. The, those days, you just left the baby outside, and everyone would look at it. And everyone else went home, but I was still there. And the shopkeeper wondered what on earth was going on. And my mum took a while to realise that she'd left me behind and went running back, terrified. And I was still there. Because I'm a very loyal son. I wouldn't go off with anybody. I always made sure I went to the right place. But, so I can empathise, lost in the temple. I mean, what sort of mother does that? Well, Mary did it, and Joseph did it. Very ordinary in many ways, wasn't it? That's about all we know about his growing up, except he was a carpenter, and he had brothers and sisters. So we don't, necessarily, we don't think that Jesus' family is going to be any different to anyone else. Mary had all the same things as a mum that any other mum would have. What we do think, though, or we do know, that Joseph, after a while, disappears off the scene. And it's not said about what happens but many people think that Joseph died early. So she loses her husband. So she's on her own now. She's a single mum bringing up her child or who may have grown up a bit by now. Don't often think of that, do we? But Mary's a single mum. Uh, other things that happened to them. They had to, at one point when Jesus was a baby, Herod, the king at the time, wanted to kill all the young babies in the land and she had to up and leave and take and go all the way to another country, to Egypt, to protect the baby that she had. Imagine that. That's, that's sort of a bit like what we see today on the TV with Ukraine and the refugees coming out and various other countries having to leave to save the lives of their children. What a thing to have to go through as a mum, as a parent. Uh, as I say, an ordinary life apart from that, really, the, the carpentry and everything else. And Jesus was apparently was a, was a carpenter's son and he would have learned carpentry. He would have learned about the Bible and about God and all of those things. And then, um, so she's on her own with no, no dad around for the children. She had other children, as we've said. And then we read about her later on when Jesus starts coming onto the scene. And he's around about 30 years old. So this is quite a while after. That's the next bit we hear. And, but she's still his mum. And so when Jesus goes to a wedding in Cana, uh, his mum says, they've run out of wine, they need to do something about it. Because she knows there's something special about her son, but I don't think she understands everything. And she goes there and then... Jesus is quite sort of offhand with her a little bit, really. He says, what's it got to do with me? It's my hour's not yet come. But Jesus, her son, was always saying these mysterious things, and I don't think she quite understood it. Neither did the rest of the family, because one day he goes back to his hometown, into the church, uh, at synagogue at Nazareth, as we heard about this the other week, and he speaks, and he embarrasses his mum and dad, or his mum, whose dad wasn't on the scene at that point, but his mum in front of everybody else by saying he's the son of God. And all the people wants to throw him over a cliff. Can you imagine how he... She felt as his mum. What's he doing? Now, we found out as well that his family thought he was bonkers and wanted to come and uh, Jesus was bonkers. So they wanted to have one of these interventions. Let's sit him down. Let's get him back to normal. He, something's going wrong here. But we find that Mary wasn't like that. She supported him but didn't understand everything. Um, and he became public enemy number one for the Pharisees. Everyone wanted to seem to kill him and yet he was very popular with other people. How do you deal with that? As a mum, as his parents. And then he's arrested and beaten. We're going to think about this in a week or two's time at Easter, aren't we? Arrested and beaten, faced a corrupt, false trial, falsely accused, and then falsely convicted, and was sentenced to death on a cross. So now she's the mother of a criminal. 
according to the law. And she stood at the foot of the cross and she's crying. The shame and the pain of all of that. So it's a lot to take in as a mum. I'm sure when you have a baby, when you're when you born, when a baby's born, I know for us it was the same for our family. We have hopes and dreams for all the family and for our girls. and all. We've got two girls, as you know, and all the things. And it, never, it never goes the way you kind of think, does it? How do we deal with that? What's the Bible got to say to us, to mums, and actually to families, and all of us today, about when life doesn't go the way it should do? And it's a struggle. Well, I think this is what I felt when I was thinking about today, sharing with you all on Mother's Day, what we should say. This is what I felt God wanted us to say. Let's go back to Christmas. And one of the things, it actually said it in the video up there, one of the things that Mary was able to do, not because she was Mary, but because she was a believer in God, is that when the angel came and told her this, all this stuff was going to happen to her, what did she say? I am the Lord's servant. I think we've got a picture up there to come up, I think. I am the Lord's servant. Let it be to me according to your word. Let it be to me according to your word. Now, for years, I used to, I, I quite loved, I liked the Beatles. I used to play all their songs and stuff like that. Still do occasionally when I'm on my own. Uh, but I used to play them for lots of people and what have you. And it was great. Loved doing that. And one of the songs we used to love playing was Let It Be. I didn't know that Let It Be was all about what Mary said here. Let it be to me according to your word. This is Mary trusting in God for all that's gone on in her life and all that's happening. And despite all the things she doesn't understand, she says, I'm going to trust in God. So, Lord, whatever it is you've got for me, my family, this child, whatever, let it be to me. I'm happy to follow your will. Now, that's a big thing to say, isn't it? But that meant that she was more able to cope with all the things that were going on because it was very strange for her. But then... We should be the same, shouldn't we? We should be able to come to God in our difficulties and what have you and say, Lord, I don't understand what's going on, but if we trust in him and we realise he's got a plan in all of this because that's what God told her, that he had a plan and he, he explained something to her. I don't really think she understood all of it, but he explained his plan to her, but she didn't really get it all, but still in all, she trusted him. And the truth of the matter is the Bible says that God has got a plan for all of our lives, hasn't he? He's got a plan for us whether we follow him or not. None of us are out of his picture, if you like. We're all in the picture. So if you're a follower of Jesus this morning, then God's got a plan for your life. And the way we ought to respond to that is to say, look, so that we understand it and we have peace, is let it be to me, Lord, according to your word. But you know, this morning, if you've come here and you're not a follower of Jesus, you just come and you're not really choosing to follow him, God's still got a plan for your life. And part of it was to be here this morning so you could hear how you need to respond to him in that. And what God wants for us is all of us to say, let it be to me according to your word. Not because Mary said it, but actually because an even greater example, Mary's son said the same, similar sort of thing. If we fast forward to a couple of weeks to Easter, we'll see another verse coming up on the screen in a second, okay, which says... Um, Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane and he's praying and he knows he's going to face the cross and Jesus identifies with all of us in that moment because there's a lot of pain coming and a lot of suffering coming and a lot of darkness and a lot of horrible stuff that's going to happen and what does Jesus do at that time? He does what we would all do. He says to God, Lord, I'd rather you took this away from me. I don't really want to go through this. If it be possible... Take this cup or this thing that I have to do from me. But, he says, as all of us should do, not my will, but yours be done. That's like his mum said it when he was born, isn't it? God, I'm happy to go with your plan because your plan is better than anything that I could ever come up with. Even though it may seem dark and it may seem difficult and it may seem painful and it may seem harsh. See, it's easy to thank God isn't it, and trust God in the good times. But what God wants us to do as mums and as fathers and as people generally is to trust him always because he has a plan and he's working it out. Now, Jesus said, let this cup pass from me. I don't really want to go through with this, but not my will, but yours be done. Now, God didn't suddenly reach in and say, it's OK, Jesus, you don't have to do it anymore. No, he had to go through the times of trial and suffering. But Jesus is a great example for us because God raised him. He was killed, wasn't he, on the cross, placed in a tomb. 
But we remember Easter, and we're going to celebrate this in a couple of weeks, that Jesus triumphed over that. He rose from the dead. And so we are able to, to identify with him. As Jesus rose from the dead and triumphed over his suffering, so we will go the same way in, in, this, in this way. But, if we tr but we have to trust it all to him. God will work his purposes out in us. There's another verse in the Bible, it's not going to come up on there, but there's another verse which says, God works everything for good. Everything. And I hope we believe that this morning. If you're a follower of Jesus this morning, whatever you're going through, however situation your family's in, particularly as we think of that today, but wherever, trust it into God's hands because he knows what he's doing. He has a plan and he has a purpose. However dark or bright it is, we need to trust it into his hands. Follow Mary's example and in particular, the example of Jesus. Let it be to me. Let not, yet not my will, but yours be done. And if you're not a follower of Jesus this morning yet, then why don't you think about trusting Jesus too? Because actually, without Jesus, you face all these things in life. We have to face them on our own. And we have to deal with them by ourselves. And it gets overwhelming. And we don't know. We go to other people and we look at them and they think to, seem to have their life all together. And they've maybe gone through the same thing. But nobody's really got an answer. And as I've said to you many times from this pulpit, the only person in the whole of the universe who can put his arm around you and say, look, it's going to be okay, you know, is Jesus. Because he's been there and he's done it. And he's got a plan. So don't worry, he says, it's, I'm working it all out. So just trust me in the middle of it all. That's, I believe, what God wanted to say to us this morning. I don't know what situation you're in or where you are up to at the moment with your family or anything else. But that's what God's calling us to do. He calls us to do that every single day. It's a very simple message, isn't it? Mary had to do it. All of us as mums and as fathers and as, as people, just generally, we all need to trust our families, particularly into God's hands. If we have family, if he's blessed us with that, whatever God has for us, it's in his plan and in his purpose. Let it be to me according to your will or purpose. Yet not my will, but yours be done. Together, shall we?